Uh, Google is formalizing its efforts with the Internet of Things by rebranding its seemingly stalled uh, Brillo IoT platform as Android Things. It's Android everything right now, and this is the next step, Android Things. Developers can get going with the SDK preview along with supported de developer kits that include the Raspberry Pi 3, the Intel Edison, and in the NXP Pico. They also have a few others that you can check the site for. Uh, Weave, which is Google's IoT platform, is expected to release in a later developer preview. Weave is more... Uh, more along the lines of, of like Google's home kit, if there was like a direct correlation. But I mean, Brillo was this IoT platform that I think Google announced a couple of years ago. And then you literally heard almost nothing about. Uh, but, you know, but we really haven't seen Google as a company really make very many consumer facing moves in the world of IoT until literally the last couple of months with Google Home and, you know, a few other efforts. So, um, I suppose it makes sense for them to rebrand, but man, Google just loves rebranding their stuff. But I mean, admittedly, Android Things is a much better name than Brillo. Yes, it's it's at least a little bit more descriptive. Yeah, Brillo is something that has your dirty dishwasher <laughs> wa washing liquid all over it. You don't want to name something like that. I don't know why that was ever a good idea, to be honest, I now that either. you mention it. So the thing is, it's updates directly from Google, which is their way of saying it's going to be more secure. You're going to yeah. get security updates faster. You're going to get... Um, you know, the fix is faster, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's more private. I don't know. I don't, well, I don't know about the private aspect. That's probably up to the people who, you know, up to the manufacturers who are creating the devices in, within which this will be built into um, to ensure privacy. But the security, I mean, that's a really important issue, right? We've seen it with the Mirai botnet. There's the ability of all of these little IoT devices to rise up at, at uh, the request of somebody and, uh, you know, focus their efforts on on attacking something. At least here you're getting updates direct from Google and hopefully there's little to no delay in that regard. If they're coming from Google the way they are with other things like Android Wear uh, as a platform, then your hope is that that's fast enough to get ahead of threats like Mirai. If and when they arise. Right. And so, you know, with Apple's home kit, you really have to use an iPhone to use Apple's home kit. But from what I understand with Android things, it's not like, oh, you have to be running an Android phone. That's sort of separate. It's, it's Android built into the devices. Yeah. It's not it's, necessarily that you have to be running an Android phone and have a Google home and be in that that ecosystem. This is something separate. You could definitely like have an iPhone and control all your Android things. With your iPhone. Yeah, I mean, it's just another IoT platform on which for, for things to talk to. As long as they know how to speak that language, then um, then there should be no resistance there. And Google, I mean, in many ways has proven that it's, you know, when it creates uh, certain things, it's not just limited to Android all the time. You know, there, there are apps and services that reach into iOS and other platforms to make these things a little bit more useful than just to the insane amount of Android people, you know, Android owners there are. Um, but I'm excited about this. New partners uh, for Weave are in the pipeline, including Belkin, Wemo, uh, LifeX, uh, LifeX, Honeywell, which I have Honeywell at home, uh, Wink, TP-Link, and First Alert. So more kind of device support kind of on the horizon. So I looked at a lot of the comment section uh, for a lot of these articles and a lot of developers or people claiming to be developers in the comment section are really suspicious of this sticking around. Like they just, you know, there was a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of comments of people saying like, this is just what Google does and it won't yes. be around. And why should we invest our time and energy and learning about this platform when they're just going to replace it with something else? Yeah. That's I mean, true. that's, that's a growing kind of frustration that people have with Google. Google is really has proven time and time again that like nothing is sacred, you know what I mean? And it, and it really kind of came to a header with, uh, was it Google um, killing off the feed reader? Why am I suddenly blanking? Uh, Google Reader? Google Reader, there we go. Where there were so many users of Google Reader, but for some reason Google decided it just didn't fit. And, you know, if, if something that used is expendable, then, you know, it, it kind of lowers people's confidence that things like this might ever might ever kind of proliferate for two, three, four, five years down the line and, and continue to get that sort of support. It's kind of a, a, a like a dark cloud that follows Google right now with all of their product releases. You always hear that. People just kind of have it in their brain that it's something from new from Google. Yeah, that's really cool. How long is it going to be here? Because it's going to go away someday. We just know that. Mm -hmm. So... So perhaps you'd be more interested in the Microsoft Internet of Things. Mary Jo Foley says Microsoft is bringing Cortana to all the devices in your home with a 2017 creators update. You can talk to your smart fridge, your internet-connected lights, your wired toothbrush. Basically, you'll be yelling commands at everything 
in your house. Now, this was uh, announced at WinHEC, a WinHEC event in Shenzhen last week. And I want to thank Jesse Goraya, uh, who is one of our viewers, who pointed out that we missed all of the WinHEC announcements last week. They just went by us with us ignoring them. So, Jesse, now we're going to talk about them. So, yeah, it's Cortana uh, is going to even be able to work when it's on standby or when the devices are on standby. So, it's great. I mean, it really just, it sounds like, and probably is more or less uh, uh, Microsoft's, you know, approach for the Amazon slash Google Home uh, thing. And this is Microsoft's version of that. Tying right into that was an announcement today that uh, Cortana Devices Software Dev Kit, which, you know, is embedding Cortana into these devices. There's a new uh, Harman Carmen. Harman Carmen Cortana, that's really hard to say, <laughs> uh, enabled uh, voice enabled speaker that's going to be releasing in February 2017. Uh, it has a really nice dead mouse uh, uh, soundtrack in the oh, video. Awesome. Uh, anyways, uh, it, it, which I mean is exactly that. It's totally a voice activated speaker, similar to what we've seen from from competitors. And uh, you know now Microsoft has its own in the pipeline. Yeah, Microsoft has been trying to like be you know the create the Microsoft Home for at least a decade. Like I remember going to CES in two thousand. So that was a more than a decade and a half ago now. They, you know, with the the TV that was going to be like, the, you know, Microsoft was going to be your home. And, you know, Bill Gates has his home all can totally controlled. And yeah. So um, hopefully, I mean, it's just, it would be interesting if like the tiny Amazon Echo speaker that came out of nowhere uh, was the door that opened to everyone saying, yes, I would love to talk to all of my mm -hmm. devices in my house. Uh, At this point, it kind of seems like that's totally true. Yeah. It seems like that is. I guess the the question is, what is the longevity of it? You know, is this is this a category that two, three, five, ten years down the line has has expanded and grown to a point to where like we can't imagine not having it? It still feels like it's outside of those lines. But I know for myself, the more I connect my home, and coupled with the more that it actually works when I want to do things. Like that's really important. The more that happens, the more I'm like, okay, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, except for the more that I yell at my Amazon Echo and it doesn't understand me, like the oh, more frustrated that's, that's, I get. That's the other side of it. And you know, it's uh, so that that is the other side of yeah. it. So it has to get better mm -hmm. quickly.